خدا میں رزوی ہو اوور دی لاسٹ فیو نائٹس ایز مولانا احمد ساگر جس مینشن ٹو یو آئی ہیو بین اٹمپٹنگ ٹو ٹیک یو آن اے جرنی سو دیٹ یو مے انڈرسٹینڈ بیٹر دی سگنیفیکنس آف دس شہادت دیٹ واز گیون بیت البیت آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ یو مے انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ دس اسٹرگل از ون دیٹ ہیڈ کمینسڈ ان دا ویری بگننگ It was a struggle that started when Allah commanded the angels to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam and all of them agreed and shaitan refused. Although he was not an angel but he was categorized to be amongst them because he kept their company. And that rejection was the first war between Haq and Batil. And we talked about this from there and I went in detail over the last few nights. Last night I spoke about the wafat of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I said that this was the most devastating time for the Sahaba Ikram and more so for the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Azwaj Mutaharat and we cannot imagine what they went through at that time when Allah's beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fidaka abi wa ummi may our parents be sacrificed at his sacred feet when he left this physical apparent dunya to journey into the kingdom of the hereafter none of us can imagine what the sahaba ikram went to and when you look at the hadith of mubarak and you look at the athar and you look at the the the, the aima sayer what they have written about this moment you will understand better it's very detailed and i was very brief last night because of the time constraints that what they went through and how much sabr they had to make but The Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were the pillars of strength to the Ahl al-Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at this time. They gave them the support that was needed. And they in turn supported the Sahaba of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in this time, I said last night that the one personality when the Sahaba Ikram were in this kashmakash, the personality that took control and caused everybody to understand what was happening was Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala I'm going to inshallah explain a little bit more in that regard and then share a little bit more information on Siddiq Akbar which I did last night I'm going to share a bit more information and then Osman Omar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala and if time for months Hazrat Osman and Mawla Ali if not tomorrow I will continue there inshallah Allah Azim there's no fixed rule that I will definitely do this I will Uh, depends on the time constraints and we'll continue like that for the next few days inshallah before i continue let us all direct our hearts and our minds and our thoughts to the holy court of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and let us recite the ruh sharif together allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina maulana muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina maulana muhammad wa ashabihi wa barik wa sallim sallu alayhi salatu wa salaman alayka ya sayyidi ya sanadi ya habibi يا طبيب يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله واصحابك يا رحمه للعالمين حضرت علامہ صوفی جمیل قادری رحمۃ اللہ تعالی علیہ ویری بیوٹیفلی سیز ہی سیز صدیق ہیں جان صداقت کی صدیق ہیں جان صداقت کی فاروق ہے شان عدالت کی آئی ٹرانسلیٹ فور یو جسنا فور دوز ہو ڈونٹ انڈرسٹینڈ صدیق ہے جان صداقت کی فاروق ہے شان عدالت کی عثمان ہے کان مروت کی حیدر کی ولایت کیا کہنا یہ سیز دیٹ حضرت صدیق اکبر از ان ڈیپ دا سول آف ٹروتھ اینڈ آنیسٹی صدیق ہے جان صداقت کی اینڈ واٹ سیز فاروق ہے شان عدالت کی یہ سیز حضرت صدیق از ان ڈیپ دا سول آف ٹروتھ اینڈ آنیسٹی And Hadrat Farooq is the honor of justice and integrity. Hadrat Umar is the honor of justice and integrity. Usman hai kaan murawwat ki. Ya kaan doesn't mean ear. Kaan means mind. Treasure. Okay. He says, Hadrat Usman is the mind of nobility and dignity. Haidar ki vilayat kya kehna. What can you say and how splendid was the sainthood of Hadrat Sayyidina Haidar Ali. 
حضرت مولا علی رضی اللہ عنہ رائے سو صدیق ہے جان صداقت کی فاروق ہے شان عدالت کی عثمان ہے کان مروت کی حیدر کی ولایت کیا کہنا سی دس از ہاؤ یو پریز دے ار ٹیچنگ اس ہاؤ ٹو پریز دا صحابہ اینڈ اہل بیت ناؤ افٹر دیٹ واٹ ہی سیز دو پھول دو پھول بتولی گلشن کے دو پھول بتولی گلشن کے ایک سبز ہوئے ایک سرخ ہوئے دو پھول بتولی گلشن کے ایک سبز ہوئے ایک سرخ ہوئے بغداد و عرب جن سے مہکے بغداد و عرب جن سے مہکے ان پھولوں کی نکھت کیا کہنا نا ہی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ امام حسین اینڈ حسین رضی اللہ عنہ He said two flowers from the garden of Batul. Who is Batul? Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anhu. He said two flowers from the gardens of Batul blossomed purely. One blossomed in green while, in the, while the other blossomed in red purely. Okay. And he says from whom Baghdad and Arab attained its fragrance most certainly. So splendid is the fragrance of both these flowers most certainly. Okay. Do pool Batuli Gulshan ke. ایک سبز ہوئے ایک سرخ ہوئے بغداد و عرب جن سے محکے ان پھولوں کی نکھت کیا کہنا کنٹینیوئنگ آؤ ڈسکشن فرام لاسٹ نائٹ آن حضرت سیدن ابو بکر صدیق رضی اللہ عنہ اینڈ ایز اے سیڈ آئی ول بریفلی ٹرائی ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ حضرت عمر اینڈ اف ٹائم پرمت حضرت عثمان غنی رضی اللہ یو ول ریمبر دیٹ ایز پر آور ڈسکشن لاسٹ نائٹ دیٹ وین نبی اکرم نور مجسم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم لیفٹ دس world in the apparent physical sense. I'm going on saying this. These words, you remember that I'm saying over the last few days when I'm talking about the wafat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I'm saying in the apparent physical sense to fulfill the promise of Allah. Otherwise, to zinda hai walla, to zinda hai walla, mere chashme alam se chup jane wale. Okay? So, we said that when the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, left this world in the apparent physical sense, The Sahaba Ikram, Ridwanullah, Ta'ala Majmain, as I just told you, what happened? They were devastated. Okay, it was a very testing, a very difficult time. Some of them were saying, Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made parda. Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made wafat. And others were not willing to accept this at that time. Others were not willing to accept this at that time. And I just told you, it was Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu who arrived and then gave a khudbah. At such a time, let me tell you, to hold yourself together without comparison. When somebody's father leaves the world, how does he hold himself together? When somebody, beloved, your mother leaves the world, how do you hold yourself together? Somebody tries to give a lecture now, can you do? In that state. Admi bechain hai, you are in a state of, 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 of depression at that time. Human nature. Okay, you're in grief. You don't know what to do. In a time like that when Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest in the creation has departed in the apparent physical sense from the dunya in that time to summon the strength and to stand on the mimbar and to deliver a khutbah at that time so that the hearts of the sahaba ikram may become united on the reality that Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has journeyed from the hereafter to the hereafter This is a very difficult task. And this task was fulfilled by Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And let me tell you something. That when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put Abu Bakr Siddiq to lead the salah. When he said, Muru Abu Bakr al-Fal yusalli bin Nas. Call Abu Bakr and let him perform the salah, lead the salah in my physical illness. Then if you really look at the spiritual aspect of that. It makes you understand that the Nabi was preparing him because Aisha Siddiqa went on saying, Ya Rasulullah, he's a very soft-hearted person. How is he going to handle the Musalla? In, when he knows that you are being so ill, how is he going to stand? That is your maqam. He won't stand there. Call Umar. He's got more courage in heart. But Rasulullah sallallahu insisted and he said, Call Abu Bakr. Put Abu Bakr on the Musalla. Because if you really look at this, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put him there to lead the Muslims. Showing that after me, the one who will lead the Muslims is Abu Bakr. And secondly, the beloved Nabi was preparing his heart for that moment when he would have to stand 
after the visal of Rasulullah SAW on the member and put all the Sahaba Ikram together in that discussion and address the Sahaba Ikram and make their hearts content. It was being prepared for that day. Otherwise, it is a very difficult task to stand on the member at that time. He is the one who delivered the khutbah and said, Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa has journeyed from this physical world in the apparent sense and gone towards his heavenly kingdom. We must also remember, and all these points of history and explanation are very important, that on the 12th of Rabiul Awal, this point is very important to note. On the morning of the 12th of Rabiul Awal, 11 Hijri, that is the year that Rasul Ipaq left this physical world in the apparent sense. On the morning, on that Monday, on the 12th of Rabiul Awal, 11 Hijri, Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq led the Fajr Salah Allah in Masjid Allah. Abu Shah. Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu led the Fajr Salah in Masjid Nabawi Sharif. And this story is made that Abu Bakr Siddiq disappeared. He was nowhere to be seen after that, after Rasulullah Sparks Parada, Ma'adallahi Rabbil is Rabzis, you know, as Imam Shafi said, Kin says, Yada Jhut koi boltani. Okay? Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq led the Fajr Salah on that day. In Masjid Nabu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after leading the Fajr Salah, Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Radilan presented himself at the feet of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He presented himself at the Qadm Sharif of Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he noticed that Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's medical state, the state of the illness that Rasul Ipaq was in the physical side of the dunya, was improving on that morning. He saw that Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was feeling somewhat better that morning. He was in some relief from illness on that morning. So when he saw that, he took the permission from Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of his wives used to live on the outskirts of Medina. And the children, and he hadn't been there for a while. So he took the ijazat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he went there to visit them for a little while. And while he was there, Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made wafa. Okay, remember all this happened with the ijazat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq was there and this happened and at that time the Sahaba Ikram were all in this, in, in this, in the state of taklif and grief and nobody was able to put them together so that they may understand that Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has left the dunya and this only was sorted out when Abu Bakr Siddiq came back. You must keep this in mind. This only was sorted out and finalized when Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh came back and he made it very clear. He delivered, he went up to the member and he did this. But how did he do this? When he came back, what did he do first? What did Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq do first? We're talking about Siddiq Akbar today. When he came back, he went into the Hujra Mubarak of Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiq radiallahu anha. That was where Rasulullah Pak made parada. Because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam requested the Azwaj Mutaharat as I told you last night. That the last few days, Huzur was physically very ill in the eyes of the dunya. So he said, my comfort is in the house of Aisha. If you all permit me, then I will stay there. And you people can come visit. And they all agreed to that. Okay. So, Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he returned, he went to the house of, to the hujra of Sayyid Aisha Siddiqa, his daughter. Okay. See, these Ravdis have enmity for Abu Bakr Siddiq. That's why they have enmity of Sayyid Aisha also. So, he went into the Hujra Mubarak. That was the Hujra Mubarak of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was covered with the Chadar Sharif. With the Chadar. Because you know, Hadrat Aisha Siddiqa covered Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Chadar after he made parada. I told you that yesterday. And when Umm Salama radiallahu anh said that at that time, she put her hand on the Sina Mubarak of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And many weeks passed. She said every time she brought her hand close to her mouth to eat, she could smell that fragrance. She could even feel it while she was making wudu after weeks on end. Okay? So when Abu Bakr Siddiq came into the Hujra Mubarak, he first raised the chadar from the Chahra Mubarak of Rasulullah. Now, we cannot even imagine what was the condition of Abu Bakr Siddiq at that time. Raising the chadar of the blessed face of Rasul Ipaq Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and seeing that Rasul Ipaq has physically left this dunya in the apparent sense. What did he do? What did Abu Bakr Siddiq do at that time? 
What was the first thing that he did after he moved the chadar? He kissed the forehead of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rasul-e-Pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam ki peshani mubarak ko bosa diya unhone. He kissed the forehead of Rasul-e-Pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam, came out and went straight onto the mimbar. And then he stood there and he delivered the khutbah and explained that Rasul Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has left the dunya in the apparent physical sense. Then Hadrat Umar Farooq stood up and he said, whatever I was saying before, all the Sahaba Ikram, it is not as it is, but it is as Abu Bakr has said. Allah. Okay? Because Hazrat Umar was saying, whoever says this word, I'm going to take his head off. Okay? But you also have to look at what was the basis of that. The Munafikin were making a joke and they were saying that you people said that he's your Nabi, how did he pass away? So Hazrat Abu Bakr, after that Hazrat Umar Farooq was saying, what you saying? Anybody who says that the Nabi has left the dunya, I'm going to take his head off. Okay? But when Hazrat Abu Bakr came and gave the khutbah, then everybody was at ease. Obviously, the state was now even more uh, grieved because they knew, indeed, Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi has left the dunya. But when did they all accept this? When it came from the zuban of Abu Bakr. When it came from the zuban of Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And this message at that moment, that Rasul Pak Sallallahu has left the physical dunya. That confirmation was given by the Zuban of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. And Allah Hadrat Adimul Barakat Imam Ahle Sunnat, Asha Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Fazle Barilvi radiallahu an explains it in very beautiful words. He says, Ambiya ko bhi ajal ani hai. The Ambiya also have to pass away ultimately. Um, but he says, how is it? Ambiya ko bhi ajal aani hai, magar aisi ki fakat aani hai. Subhanallah. Ambiya ko bhi ajal aani hai, magar aisi ke fakat aani hai. The Ambiya also have to pass away ultimately, but such that it is only momentarily. And after that, Allah Hazrat says, Phir usi aan. In that same moment, Phir usi aan. That after that moment, in that moment, Immediately in that moment, Phir usi aan ke baad unki hayat. Phir usi aan ke baad unki hayat. Misle sabik wahi jismani hai. Misle sabik wahi jismani hai. And I'm going to translate the whole thing in English so we all understand properly. The Ambiya also have to pass away ultimately. But such that it is only momentarily. Then in that moment after it immediately... The same as before, they are alive physically. That is what Allah Hazrat Adi Mubarakat is telling us. That is the message that Siddiq Akbar was actually giving. Okay, he was giving to the Sahaba Ikram. Now, as I said last night, thereafter, upon the consensus of the Sahaba Ikram, upon the consensus of the Sahaba Ikram, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was appointed as the first Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that is why even when he used to write his name, with his name he used to write Khalifa of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to write, Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He fulfilled this responsibility with complete sincerity and, de- and, de- and dedication. If you look at the life of Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, and his khulus in the khidmat of the Muslim ummah and of the deen of Allah and his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will have no words. The sincerity and the devotion that he fulfilled this responsibility with and all his actions, everything that he did or he commanded, was in command when it was in accordance with the command of Allah and his beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? You must remember one see if I discuss the, the numerous things that Hazrat Abu Bakr did in his time of in, during his Khilafat. How long was his Khilafat? Two years and three months. Two years and three months. Rasul Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made parda in eleven Hijri. Rabi Lawal Shari. And Hadrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq made, made uh, Parda in 13 Hijri. Two years and three months. Okay, roughly. But if I tell you everything that he did in that three, two years and three months, you will be amazed at the amount of khidmat he made in that two years and three months. Okay? But one of the very important things was he fought and did battle and made jihad against those who refused to pay zakat, the man in zakat. They, after Rasul Pak Sallallahu made parda, there was a group of people that refused to pay zakat. Okay? They refused. You must remember, they rejected zakat. Okay? And when he waged war against them, he prepared an army to go against them. 
حضرت عمر فاروق رضی اللہ عنہ ادز ایڈریسٹ ہیم اینڈ دے سیڈ ابو بکر دس از اے ویری ڈیلیکیٹ ٹائم ٹو بی ڈوئنگ اے بیٹل رسول پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم جس لیفٹ دی دنیا دی کنڈیشن اف دی صحابہ اکرام از اسٹل اگریوڈ اینڈ اٹس اے ویری ڈیفیکلٹ ٹائم ٹو فائٹ اینڈ دے دے ار ریفیوزنگ ٹو پے زکات سو وائی یو وائی وی ڈوئنگ دس یو نو اٹس 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 اے ٹائم ٹو جس گیدر اور سیلفز ایٹ دی مومنٹ اوکے دے ہیڈ دی پوائنٹ It's a very de- 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 difficult and very delicate moment. But Hadar Abu Bakr Siddiq, I'm giving you the gist, made it very clear. Namaz is for us. Anybody who rejects namaz, I will make jihad against them here. Like that zakat is for us. Like that zakat is for us. And he gave numerous discussions and time is not permitting to go there. And rejecting either is tantamount to kufr. Okay? So Hadrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu not anyone not allow anyone no matter when even in that delicate moment they opposed Allah's nabi's hukum Allah and Allah's hukum Abu Bakr Siddiq made jihad against them he took out an army against them okay and by the grace of Allah and the sadqa of Rasul Pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah made him successful in that day now something very nice that I want to share with you tonight حضرت صدر الفادل علامہ سیدین سید نعیم الدین مراد آبادی رضی اللہ عنہ ون آف دی خلفاء آف سید اعلیٰ حضرت عظیم البرکت رضی اللہ عنہ ہی ہیز آلسو ریٹن اے بیوٹیفل بک آن کربلا اٹس کال سوان کربلا نیومرس کتابس لائک دی آئی نائی قیامت وچ از ریگارڈ ٹو ون آف دا موسٹ اوتھینٹک ان دی اردو لینگویج وچ اعلیٰ وچ یوز ٹو بی ریڈ ان دا مجلس آف اعلیٰ حضرت رضی اللہ عنہ اینڈ لاٹ آف انفارمیشن آئی ایم شیئرنگ وتھ یو فرام دیئر ایز ویل ون از دا سوان کربلا ایم گیو دی اردو بکس اینڈ ان دی عربک لینگویج دی آر نیومرس بک They, just, they detail in the Tariq al-Khulafa of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti radiallahu anhu, Imam Bahirki's work, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Ibn Hajar Makki radiallahu anhu, As-Sawaiq al-Muharraka, all these books have discussed in detail, but Aina Qiyamat is one of them, and one was Sawanai Karbala, and another very uh, nice book is the kitab that is written by Mufti Jalaluddin Amjadi rahmatullahi wa ta'ala, Khudbat al-Muharram. But coming back to Hazrat Sadr al-Fadil, Lama Naimuddin Muradabadi radiallahu anhu, he says something after this incident, which was related to Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, making jihad against the people who refused to, who rejected the zakat basically. It was not just about refusing to pay, they rejected the zakat. They were rejecting the fardiyat of zakat. Okay. So he says, and I'm quoting, he says from here, Hadrat Sadr al-Fadil says, I want you to listen to this. Actually these are words that need to be inscribed in our hearts. He says from here, the Muslims should take a lesson and learn that it is necessary to support and defend haq from this waqiyah of Hadr Abu Bakr fighting against those who rejected the zakat he says from here the Muslims should what should they do? should take a lesson and they should learn that it is necessary to support and defend haq what's haq? the truth and oppose those who oppose haq and oppose those who oppose haq in every situation, no matter how delicate it may be. And a nation that delays in opposing those who deviate from the truth. Please listen. And a nation who delays in opposing those who deviate from the truth will soon be destroyed. Listen carefully. If you don't oppose those who speak against haq, that nation will be destroyed. And then he says, nowadays some simple people also forbid the refutation of the false and deviant sects. The false and the deviant groups, the badmazabs, there are some people who don't want you to speak against them. But in that zamana he is talking about the simple person. Today so-called ulama are not allowing it. So-called masajid are not allowing it. Mustn't speak against them. Listen to the message of Sadr al-Fadil on this. He says, nowadays there are simple people who also forbid the refutation of false and deviant sects, the Badmazhabs, and say that in this time we must stop fighting each other, very delicate time. We must stop fighting each other, okay? Now we must all stand together. In other words, Pak, the Sahaba Ikram, Hazrat Abu Bakr and Umar and other Sahaba didn't say that unite with them. They just said the moment, because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has just made parada, how will the soldiers be able to go into battle, etc. But you must remember, when Hazrat Osama was sent with his army before Rasulullah Pak made parada, Rasul Pak sent against the Romans an army under the authority of Hadrat Osama before he made Parda. 
And at a distance when he heard and being briefed that Rasulullah Pak is about to make wafat, they came back. And after the battle, he asked, what do we do? A lot of them said, do not send them back. He said, go back. He said, go back. They said, oh Abu Bakr, why are you sending them back? He said, I will not hold back that army which the Nabi commanded to go. <laughs> Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi commanded them to go. That I will not hold it back. Look at that. Look at that shan. Look at that adherence to one hukum of Rasulullah. <coughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So coming back to what Sadullah Fadil says. He said that such people forbid the refutation of the false and the deviant sects, the Badmas hubs, and say that in this time we must stop fighting with each other like we are today. He said they should learn, such person should learn, such people should learn from the actions and from the way of Abu Bakr Siddiq. They should learn from the actions and the way of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an that he did not delay in suppressing those who opposed the, fall, the opposed haq. He didn't delay in opposing, suppressing those who opposed what is haq. He didn't delay in suppressing and oppressing and, and, and sorry and opposing falsehood. Even in such a critical time. Even what time was more critical than that? Even in such a critical time. He said and then he gives a message to us. He says to be oblivious and careless regarding those firqas who sprouted in order to harm Islam is indeed a means of causing harm to Islam. Very important message. Very, very important message on this topic. In brief, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Radilan's great services towards the deen of Islam. Before that, in the zamana of physical zamana, uh, Zahiri zamana of Rasulullah Pak, what Hazrat Abu Bakr didn't do for Islam? What didn't he do in the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Subhanallah. But this was in the two years and three months. If he only did this and did nothing else, it was sufficient for him. Okay? Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that nothing can harm Abu Bakr after this. Okay? Said about Hazrat Umar certain things. But these Sahaba Ikram, the Quran is saying that Allah is pleased with them, Jannah is theirs. But still they strived, they made mahnat for protecting the people's iman. Now, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. When the time came, and I'm going briefly, I'm not going on the detail of his life, others we need 10 days only for that. When the time came for Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, I want you to listen with your hearts to leave this dunya. Look at his love for the noble family and the Azwaj Mutaharat and everybody else. When the time came to leave this world, Hadrat Sayyidatna Aisha Siddiq, radiallahu anh, she says that when the time drew near for the passing of my beloved father, in other words, Hazrat Abu Bakr, he asked the people, what day is it today? What day is it today? The people mentioned to him, oh Abu Bakr, it's Monday. He said, if I pass away tonight, then do not delay my burial. If I pass away on this day, right, do not delay my burial. Until the next day. For I love my death and the day and night which is closer to the passing of Rasulullah. Allah. Even that, even that he wanted in his rule goes, it must be in following the Sunnah of Rasulullah. I'm being very brief about all these discussions. Hadith Sayyidina Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti Radilan has explained it in detail. And let me, while we're on this topic of his visa, let me tell you something else about him. I usually finish at 8.30 nowadays. The first day was 1 hour 15 minutes and I've kept it 45 minutes and roughly around there. So I'm going to finish at around 8.30 inshallah tonight as well. And whatever is left, we'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Dhuru de paak Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyana wa ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina wa ala Muhammad wa ashabi wa bari wa sallam salli wa alayhi. Since we're talking about the passing of Abu Bakr Siddiq, his wafat, let me tell you something. That Sayyidatun Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu an, she reports that Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu was making his wasiyat. He was telling his family that after I pass away, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. So then came to the part about talking about the distribution of his estate or whatever he had, whatever he owned. So he said to, this was during his final illness. He said to Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiq radiallahu who was his daughter and the beloved wife of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to oh my beloved daughter, whatever property, whatever wealth I possess will today become the property of my years. So he knew he's going to pass away. 
already he knew. He said, today is going to become their property. Okay? It will become the property of my heirs. From amongst my children are two brothers, your two brothers, Aisha, Abdurrahman and Muhammad, and your two sisters. Allah, Allah. Aisha, amongst my heirs are your two brothers, from amongst my children rather, are your two brothers, Abdurrahman and Muhammad, and two sisters, you people, you two sisters, your two sisters. So you should distribute my wealth in accordance with the command of the Holy Quran and each of you should take your rightful share. He was very ill at that time. So Hazrat said that when Aisha Siddiqa was thinking because of the illness he is saying these things. So she said, oh my beloved father, I have only one sister, Asma. Hazrat Asma Bitta Abu Bakr. I have only one sister. So who is that second sister? You said two brothers, that is fine. You said you and your two sisters. I only have one sister, Asma. Who is the other sister? Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, said, Your stepmother Habiba bint Kharja is pregnant. And the child that she will give birth to will be a girl. No scan. No technology. Abu Bakr Siddiq is saying already before the birth, Kilariki paida hogi. And a daughter was born. But look at his, look at his sadaqat. Look at how just he is being. The child is not even born as yet and he's speaking about when the child is born. Make sure the child gets a heart. Allahu Akbar. And it was as he said and he said that she will be your second sister. And as it happened, Habiba bint Kharja gave birth to a daughter called Umay Kulpum. Okay, and she was now part of what Hazrat Abu Bakr had mentioned. Now, this is Siddiq Akbar. This is that companion of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who the Ravzis referred to as a kafir. They referred to him as an apostate. They swear at him. Go and look at some of the books that they have written. They have written that keep dogs, keep one's name Abu Bakr and keep one's name Umar. So much rare. And I'm, this is why I'm going through the Sahaba before I come to the Ahle Bayt. Because this Sahaba taught us what is the maqam of the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I will be proving that inshallah in the next few days. Yes, the Quran has mentioned about them. That is sufficient. The beloved Nabi has mentioned. But what the Nabi mentioned, how did it reach us? Through the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? So, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, passed from this physical world according to most narrations on the 22nd of uh, Jumad al-Akhir, that in Hijri, at the age of 63. As per the age that which is well known about Rasul Ibn making wafa. One day also, at the age of 63, 13 Hijri, serving as the first Khalifa of Islam for two years and three months. It was on this day that the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the beloved of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu journeyed towards his beloved master and our master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and was blessed with his greatness and excellence which not which nobody has attained actually. With that maqam, he was blessed with resting right alongside Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nobody can get that maqam. Okay? He was blessed with resting right next to the beloved and he is blessed with resting right next to the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the sacred chamber of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his janazah salah was performed by Hazrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala an. And the scholars then say, subhanAllah, very beautifully, they said, the Yare Ghar became the Yare Mazar. Subhanallah. The Yare Ghar became the Yare Mazar. The companion of the cave now became the companion of the sacred grave of Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He was been blessed with such an honor that when Allah will raise the people as per his divine will, after everybody, the surah is blown and everybody, will, if the world will come to an end, then when it's blown again and Allah will raise everybody. Then he's given that honor 
by the divine will of Allah that the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi will be the first to rise. Allah From his Rosh Mubarak, you know that. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi will rise first. And how Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will rise? Abu Bakr's hand in his right hand. Abu Bakr's hand in his right hand. Umar's hand in his left hand. And as they rise, the Ahl Baqi will come up again. Okay? And this is why Sayyidina Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu is reported from her that Rasul Ipaq said, Abu Bakr is from me and I'm from him. Abu Bakr is my brother in this world in the hereafter also. Go and look at this in Kanzulumat. Rasul Ipaq said this. And that is why Sayyidina Allah Hadrat Azim al I'm ending this, this discussion of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anh today. Where Allah Hadrat Azim al says, Saya Mustafa Maya Istifa. Saya Mustafa Maya Istifa is a Nazi Khilafat Pelako Salam. Yani Us Abzulul Khalq Ba'dur Rasul. Yani us afdalul khalq ba'd rasul thani thnayn hijrat bil aqwa salam asdaqu as-sadiqin sayyidul muttaqin chashma goshe goshe chashma goshe wizarat bil aqwa salam ala hadrat is saying the shadow of mustafa he who attained the honor of his pure distinction upon the pride and the honor of the station of caliphate millions of salutations and he says the most truthful of the truthful the leader of the pious congregation siddiq the most truthful of the truthful the leader of the pious congregation Upon the eyes and the ears of the ministerial position, millions of salutations. Okay, and this was the shan of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. And let's take five or seven minutes more of your time today and go to Hazrat Umar Farooq. Let's visit Hazrat Umar Farooq's discussion and his life briefly so that from tomorrow it's shorter uh, or I can go into the next discussion. After leaving, from this, after leaving this dunya, Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, uh, left this dunya after Rasul Ipaq, the Khalifa was Abu Bakr. After Hazrat Abu Bakr Saddiq left the dunya, Hazrat Umar Farooq was appointed as the Khalifa. Uh, and Hazrat Umar Farooq, you know, we spent his entire life like Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. And I'm not going to go too much into the discussion because actually on the last few Jumas in Lodge Group, I've been talking about Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. So you already would know a lot by now. Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar Farooq uh, spent his entire life like Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq following the commands of Allah and his beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he, he did this while sticking to the system of Hazrat Abu Bakr. Hazrat Umar Farooq did this while sticking to the system of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh. And as I told you before, that is why when he used to initially write his name, he wrote the Khalifa of the Khalifa of Rasulullah. Until after that, the people started to say that they would call him Amir al-Mu'amini. Okay? Now, after, you know, I don't want to go into too much detail about the life of Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu anh, But it is sufficient to know that Hadrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu's maqam and fadilat, and as I've been explaining over the Jumat, is such that Allah had blessed him with this uniqueness. That he was the di- distinction by, between Haq and Batil. But now, he, his, his, his Khilafat land lasted for 10 years and some months. Okay, because he made Parda in 23 Hijri. Okay, 13 Hijri, 11 Hijri, Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa 13 Hijri, Hadrat Abu Bakr, 23 Hijri. Hazrat Umar radiallahu anh, right? And as I said to you yesterday, 35 Hijri, Hazrat Osman, 40 Hijri, Hazrat Ali radiallahu anh. And that's why I told you, for those who say that Hazrat Ali is the first Khalifa, then if Hazrat Ali radiallahu anh had to be the first Khalifa, he would have been till the time he ended in 40. What would have been happened about the other three? Rasul Ipaq said that there, Abu Bakr fil Jannah, wa Umar fil Jannah, wa Osman fil Jannah, wa Ali fil Jannah, giving that I said that day, because Huzur knew that after me, Abu Bakr will stay only two years and three months in the dunya, 13 Hijri he'll go, 23 Hijri Umar will go, 35 Hijri Osman will go, Ali will be remaining till the end. And that is why he was given the taqat of Wilay. Subhanallah. Okay? That maqam, that great maqam of Mawla Ali. <coughs> so, after the Wisal, of, uh, of, 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 of Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar Radilan carried out his duties and I'm being very brief today. I'm only going to tell you about the Wisal of Umar Farooq today. Only I'm going to tell you about the Wisal and I'm ending. Hazrat Umar Farooq Radiallahu An Subhanallah. You know he was wounded. Right? Hazrat Umar Farooq Radiallahu An was wounded when he was attacked by Abu Lu'ul. Okay? He was attacked with a double-edged dagger. Okay? And when Hazrat Abu Bakr was wounded in this vicious attack on him, he said to his son, Hadrat Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu You know what he said? He didn't do what he felt like. He was the Khalifa. He could do whatever he felt like. But he didn't do that. When he was injured and he realized, that now for me to be saved from this injury is very difficult. This is going to be the end. I'm going to leave this dunya due to this injury. 
and he said to Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, go to Ummul Mu'mineen Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha. I want you to listen. He said, go to Ummul Mu'mineen Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, and say to her that Umar conveys salam. He said, Abdullah, he said to his son, today don't go and say Amirul Mu'mineen said salam. Today go say Umar bin Khattab said salam. Ah. He said, go to her and say, Umar ibn Khattab has conveyed salam or Aisha Siddiqa Ummul Mu'mineen and say to her that Umar has a request. Allah. Amir Mu'mineen. But saying today don't say Amir Mu'mineen. Because if you said Amir Mu'mineen, what's going to happen? She'll have to listen. Say Umar bin Khattab. Umar bin Khattab has a request. You need to read between the lines. Umar radiallahu anh wishes to be given permission. What permission he wants? Go and tell her. Request to her. Give salam and say Umar has a request. He wishes to be given permission to be buried beside his beloveds. Allah. In other words, besides Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Hadrat Abu Bakr. That's his request. In other words, he wanted to be there. Hadrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anh now went to the son of Hadrat. See. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look at him how he's teaching his son the adab of that Mubarak house. Okay. Hadrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar goes and he stands outside and he makes salam and then he asks permission. He has permission and he enters and when he enters he sees Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa is weeping because she has heard about Abu Bakr Siddiq's the attack on Abu Bakr Siddiq. Hazrat Umar Farooq sorry. She's weeping because she heard about Hazrat Umar Farooq's attack, daughter's attack. She's weeping. She's weeping and Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu then says to her Umar bin Khattab has sent salam to you. Oh, Umul Mu'mineen, Umar bin Khattab has conveyed his salam. And he said that I should convey a message to him, to you, that he says, I wish to be buried besides my beloveds. In other words, besides Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Now I want you to listen to us. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When Hadrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar goes and he gives this request. Hadrat Aisha is weeping at that time. And when she hears the request, she said, Oh Abdullah, I had a tamanna of being buried here. Oh Abdullah, I had a wish of being buried here after pass away. But today, I'm giving preference over myself to Umar Farooq. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Today I'm giving preference to Hazrat Umar over myself. Permission is granted. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar quickly goes back. When he comes back to the home of Hazrat Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, wherever Hazrat Umar Farooq was, and he's told, Umar Farooq is told, Abdullah has come back. He says, pick me up, make me sit. Pick me up, make me sit. Bring me into a sitting position. And he's brought into a sitting position with the support of somebody. Then he says, Abdullah, what news did you bring? What news did you bring? He doesn't say, oh my father. He says, oh Amirul Mu'mineen. None other. He says, oh Amirul Mu'mineen. It is that which you wished for. Subhanallah. Ummul Mu'mineen has granted permission to you. That you may rest beside Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Hadrat there. Abu Bakr. Ya aapki jo hai tadfeen waha ho. Rawzai Rasul. Hazrat Abu Umar Farooq radiallahu when he heard this, he's in immense pain. He's been wounded so severely. Hazrat Umar Farooq when he hears this, Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah. He says, Allah ka shukar hai. He said, there was nothing more important to me right now than this. When my soul is removed, he still didn't finish. When my soul is removed, then carry me and take me there towards the Hujra of Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Outside, outside. Take me there, then make salam again to Aisha Siddiqa. And again tell her, Umar is asking permission. Umar's ruh is gone. But he said, tell her, Umar is asking permission. She has already given permission. Umar is asking permission. And if again Ummul Mu'mineen gives permission, 
then take me into the Hujra Sharif. And if she defers the permission, if she defers the first permission that she gave, then bury me amongst the Muslims in Jannatul Baqi. The decision is that of Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu Umar Faruq radiallahu There is a hadith, and, and, and let me tell you this, and I'm going to end with this today. There is a hadith in Bukhari Sharif. This hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, Kitabu Janais. Okay, in the book of Janaza, Sahih Bukhari, Kitabu Janais, Bab ma jaa fi kabri nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa abi bakri wa umar. It's in that chapter. Okay. It is reported in Bukhari, this is the narrative of this is Hisham in which he reports from his father, Hadrat Urwa, radiallahu anhu. He says, when the eastern wall of the house of the Hujra of Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anhu fell down during the time of the Khilafat of Walid bin Abdul Malik. At that time, the eastern wall of the house of Hazrat Aisha fell down on the covers. On the Mubarak covers. And when that wall fell, this hadith in Bukhari, when it fell, the people quickly started to restore it. They started to, it fell towards the cover. So they started to restore the cover, repair the, 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 the wall, repair that wall of the house of Sayyidah Aisha, the Hujra Mubarak. And while they were busy restoring this wall, they started to panic. They became afraid and they were alarmed. Why? Because they saw a foot out of one of the covers. What they saw? A foot outside one of the covers and they were panicked and they were afraid because they thought that this was the qadam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the people at that time. They could not figure out and they could not find anybody who could recognize that it was indeed the qadam of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa At that time they couldn't find anybody. And Hadrat Sayyidina Urwa himself says that I was the only one there who could do this. So I told them, Qasam Khudaki. By Allah, this is not the foot of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I recognize it very well. This is the foot of Umar Faruq. Hey, whose foot it was? Umar Faruq. Now let me tell you something. What's so exciting about it? Yes, his foot is, is his jism is still in pure condition after his visal. But let me tell you when. You must note that the era of Walid's Khilafat was from 86 Hijri to 96 Hijri. When Hadrat Umar Faruq met Pazda, 23 Hijri. And Walid's Khilafat was, the time of his control was from 86 Hijri to roughly 96 Hijri. So it means for approximately 70 years, it's gone over 73 years, but I'm saying approximately 70 years, more or less, there was no effect of the ground on the Jisme Mubarak of Hadrat Umar Faruq. If this is the Shan of Hadrat Umar Faruq, then what is the shan of his master and our master Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that foot being zahir, that wall just didn't fall like that. Everything is by the will of Allah. It became zahir that wala taqulu li may yuqtalu fi sabili Allahi yamwat bala yam wala kila tashurun. Do not say those who have been slain the way of Allah to be dead. For they are alive. And that is why that is why it has been said about Hadrat Sayyidina Umar Faruq so many times that Allah had blessed him with such a great maqam. If I go on on this discussion of Umar Farooq, I'll take another half an hour, 45 minutes, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to end with the words of Sayyidi Allah Hadrat, Adimul Barkat, radiallahu talan, wo umar jiske aada peshayda sakar, wo umar jiske aada peshayda sakar, us khuda dost Hazrat pelako salam. That umar of whose enemies, hellfire is obsessed with passion. In other words, Jannam is waiting, let them come. Okay? Wo umar jiske aada peshayda sakar, yani, you know, you, you're obsessed with somebody that you really love. But Jahannam is obsessed with them coming there because it wants to cause them that azab. Okay? Because these people are the sahab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wo umar jiske sakar us khuda dost Hazrat Pilako sallam Allah Hazrat says that umar upon whose enemies hell fire is obsessed with the passion upon that personality who is beloved to Allah. Millions of salutations. So this is brief discussion on Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu alayhi Time permits tomorrow I'll tell you a few more hadith on Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu alayhi and then we'll go to Hadrat Sayyidina Osman very briefly, very, very briefly. And then Mawla Adi radiallahu anhu tomorrow. And time permitting Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra. Thereafter, I'm going to talk about the Ahl Bayt. And I'm going to speak almost 
all of the discussions from Hadith and Mubaraka on the maqam and the fazilat of the Ahl al-Bayt. And inshallah, uh, in that we will make rad of the Badr Mazhabs as well. And then thereafter we'll talk about the Battle of Karbala and Hasnain Karim, inshallah. Wa ma'alinu balaq, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.